of them. There's some big healthy black tips in there. Why do they keep coming over this here? This one's charging at us. I know, but I don't understand so why. Hi. Look at them. Why, what, why are you guys coming over here? There once was a young woman who attempted to land her kite back on her sailboat. Okay, it was me. Unbeknownst to me, hordes of spawning surgeon fish were clustered close to the boat with about 30 to 40 sharks feeding. I was not aware of this when I kited by bewildered, thinking to myself, I don't remember a huge coral head this close to our boat. Wait, why are they moving? What the heck is going on? I quickly realized I was attempting to land my kite to my husband on the bow of the boat while I was floating in the midst of a shark feeding frenzy. That maneuver includes a hundred foot swim back to the boat. At that moment, with sharks literally frothing the water, no thank you. Now, I know I'm a lot bigger than the fish being hunted, but I'm also right in the shark's path and they are nuts when they feed. There have been a surprising number of shark attacks on this island lately, including three weeks ago when a woman was attacked outside the lagoon by an oceanic white tip shark. She had both her arms and her left boob ripped off. Now that type of shark is way more aggressive, bigger, and the woman was a tourist following a pod of pilot whales known to attract oceanic white tips. Then yesterday, a nine-year-old boy was accidentally bitten in the lagoon during a feeding session organized by a local tour group. So of course those attacks flashed in my mind while I was kiting amongst the spawning fish and feeding sharks. I was not going to be number three for the month. Ryan suggested I go to the other side of the boat, in the deep water and away from the feeding frenzy. I happily quickly zipped over that way and feeling more relieved, I added a little jump in celebration of a great day. Then I got myself back into concentration mode as landing a kite on the bow of a boat is not easy and I was tired and ready to get back on board. I attempted a few landings but was waved off by Ryan. He later told me he was trying to decide if he should tell me not to fall. Apparently, the sound of the board cruising through the water attracted four or five sharks. They bolted out from under the boat straight for the bubbles and then they would scatter in different directions. <laughs> you rode right through that. that was <laughs> I did not know they were there. <laughs> Saw whining ledger fucking kite. How was I going to get back to the boat? Ryan took the dinghy downwind. I kited down to him, hoping my new buddies would not follow. My goal was to land my bum right in the dinghy while still flying the kite. I only need to experience that once. Now for another incredible spawning story. Man, there's a lot of action going on out here. So what you're saying is a symbobidium has a phenotypic or might have a phenotypic outcome on the, the expressive reproductive characteristics of, of the host organization now? Exactly, you got it right. If you have certain type of symbobidium in your coral, they might have a better uh, aptitude or abilities to be in the water and resist more. So this is what we do exactly. The, the symbobidium can have an impact on the phenotype of the coral, of the babies, of the larvae and everything. Because to me, it always seemed like a, a presiocopial relationship between the, the two phenotypical presentations of the, of the coral strata. So for you to tell me that actually the tree could be diversificationized into you know, a microbiometrical presentation is, is truly remarkable. And I think that um, our viewers would be very interested in following up on the project. Our good friend Alex invited us to dive with him tonight in hopes of seeing the coral spawning. During the month of October, roughly six days after the full moon, between 9 and 9.15 p.m., yes, they can even pinpoint the time, certain types of corals spawn, releasing their sperm and eggs into the vast ocean. I'm uh, Alexandre Mercier. I'm working at uh, Creob Station as an engineer in uh, marine biology. Creob is an international research station based in Moorea, dedicated to a number of projects including the study of the coral reef ecosystems. They took the coral five days ago from the field and they take them back here. And now uh, they are just here for the spawning and they observe if they spawn here at the same time at outside. They took them on the artificial tree. Yeah. It's a restoration program for our corals. These are the same uh, coral we will uh, see tonight outside. Yeah. It's just clones. Uh, Jan is yeah. just checking if he, he can see some uh, sign of the spawning. Is the clue when yeah. the coral is like up 
and hard? Is that when you know that the spawn <laughs> <is enough? laughs> We'll take a picture of the number of the coral tree. Mm. If, uh, if it spawns here also at the same time, ah, I see. and it's the same genotype, with the stress of the transport from uh, the field to the pre-op station, if there is like one day delay or the same night. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Tonight we're diving in hopes of seeing this spectacular event. And then on Lunar's queue, thousands of tiny eggs are released. This dance of nature lasts for 10 to 15 minutes, once a year. The coral at the laboratory did not spawn at the same time as the other ones in the field on the restoration trees. They actually spawned the night before. Now the question is why? I'm curious, what do you think? Also, I made a mistake in our previous episode about reef safe sunscreen. The sunscreen called Sunbum was entertaining to use, but Sunbum is not reef safe, but the other brands are. I even wrote two reviews on their website asking them to please not advertise their product as reef safe, but they deleted both my reviews. In my opinion, I would not recommend using Sunbum. For me personally, Badger is top on my list, in case you wanted to know. And I tried to land and splashed and one came bolting straight for me and I said, uh -uh, I'm not landing here because I have to swim to the boat then. So then I tried the other side, deep water. And guess who started following me? Four of them. <laughs> you guys are so curious. Look at him. 